All right, so hey there, my name is Jacob Logis. Uh, I'm gonna be presenting some work in our lab, uh, as you said, around synthesizing design space for social controls in shared digital resources. This was authored by Temi, uh, Hanan, and Alan, and of course, Shavik there at the end, and I'm gonna be presenting. There we go. So let's begin with an informal poll of the room. Could everybody raise their hand that shares a Netflix account? Just about everyone. Okay, so we have uh, people from Netflix outside to collect all the, all the fees that you guys have uh, avoided. Um, so yeah, as many of you are clearly aware, sharing accounts is becoming more and more commonplace. Uh, with shared accounts as they exist now though, security and privacy is only as strong as the weakest link. Security and privacy controls generally presume individual ownership of accounts, uh, even those with sub-accounts. If an account is shared among users who are not all S&P savvy, there will be vulnerabilities that can occur. Um, as I alluded to before, albeit jokingly, uh, individual ownership is preferable to the corporations who provide these services, but the reality is that accounts are being shared between users. With this said, there is little to no guidance on what makes for good design for communal security and privacy. Thus, any attempt to approach this problem does so at the risk of overlooking important considerations for design. Therefore, we took a human-centered approach in exploring this design space. We investigated what key design dimensions exist for controls on communal design resources, or sorry, communal digital resources, and then we interrogate what trade-offs may arise uh, for these dimensions. To answer our research questions uh, that you saw before, we held participatory design jams. For those unfamiliar, a design jam is a form of workshop wherein participants collectively brainstorm a tool to address a specific problem. The jams produced both a record of the proposals and a discussion or critique of the proposals among the wider group. Uh, it's important to note we're not saying that any one of these proposals are things that should be implemented. Uh, instead, we're using this as an exercise um, of exposing important considerations to find general design dimensions for the space. So on the, re, uh, on the things that came out of our design uh, jams, we performed a thematic analysis um, to reveal design dimensions and the trade-offs related to those. So to begin with, the design dimensions we identified from our analysis are social transparency, stakes and responsibility, structures of governance, and promotion of pro-group S&P behaviors, though these dimensions do have trade-offs. Um, some trade-offs apply only to a single dimension, while others are applicable across dimensions. The following are some trade-offs which we'll discuss as they uh, arise in the context of the dimensions. The first is security versus privacy. Second is coordination costs. Third, social hurting. And finally, social friction. So the first design consideration being social transparency is the ability to know what others in a group are up to at any time uh, in the shared resource. Uh, while socially translucent systems and prior work also include things like awareness and accountability, visibility was most present in our design jams. Uh, participants mentioned visibility allowed for activity auditing, especially for groups with members seen as less technically savvy, think parents or grandparents. Uh, this kind of hypervigilance addressed users' feelings of loss of control when they share a resource. Um, however, this hypervigilance brings a trade-off uh, between security and privacy. Discussions around the familial context see it as a boon, actually, to know what is being done with this shared resource by all members. This really reflects how parental controls are uh, designed, allowing elders to keep an eye on children's activity. But in the context of uh, friends and roommates, uh, there was a preference against this kind of visibility. Um, this probably mostly arises from the need for privacy between peers. Going back to the Netflix example, you may have a guilty pleasure show that you don't want to share with your friends. Um, so, in addition, design for colleagues who are similarly wary of having their activity meant monitored for a fear of employer surveillance. Uh, this is more colored by existing system used in employee surveillance. Think of systems that 
detect whether or not you leave your desk when you're working from home. Uh, the second design consideration is stakes and responsibility. Uh, this one emerged from desire for group members to be equally invested in the security and privacy of the wider group. Um, some proposed rotating responsibility among the group to avoid concentrating power or, prevent, or presenting an undue burden on a minority of the group. Uh, others wanted to share the risk uh, through collecting collateral. Uh, here, collateral could be monetary or it could be that they want to have everybody entrust confidential personal information into a shared resource. Though this consideration, as with the others, have trade-offs. Rotating responsibility ensures power is shared, but it requires coordinating a schedule for handing off said responsibility. Similarly, collecting and assessing collateral needs to be coordinated by the group. With personal information, there has to be some sort of qualitative assessment by the group on the value of the information Otherwise, some group members may feel that there's imbalance of risk. Uh, if we think monetarily too, if an equal amount of money is put into the account, um, some members may be better or worse off than others, and at that point, are they really putting in the same amount of risk? And our third dimension is the structures of governance. This really describes how decisions for a shared resource are made. Uh, governance structures propose reflected existing systems of governance and really tended to map on how social groups were already organized. Egalitarian governance, for example, were mentioned more in social groups without any inherent structure, think friendships, wherein a, wherein a healthy relationship, all actors are acting as equals. On the other hand, hierarchical forms of government uh, were mentioned for groups that already have a hierarchy, think the family with parents and children. So in governance, again, there are several trade-offs. The first is the problem of social herding. In this trade-off, uh, group members could observe how others vote, and it may influence their own vote. In hierarchical governance, we could see this being a problem uh, where those with greater power may introduce fears of retribution uh, if you vote against them. Similarly, in egalitarian governance, voters may be influenced by some perceived traits of its members, think, popularity or perceived competency. Uh, another trade-off like before is coordination costs. A resource may be governed by consensus, but consensus does require members to be available. Uh, depending on the decision-making process, this could pose a greater burden in hierarchical models since decision, decision makers must be constantly available. And then lastly for governance, social friction becomes a trade-off. In egalitarian systems, group dynamics akin to social herding are an issue. Uh, for example, members may not want to upset another member for fear of social retribution, and members in power of hierarchical systems may have a tension with other members. In the case of the participant here, uh, he desires unquestioned access to shared resource without peer approval. And our last design dimension relates to the promotion of group security and privacy behaviors, uh, encouraging gr good group S&P behavior for the benefit of the group. Here, non-binding agreements with a security score helped quantify the security and privacy performance of in-group individuals. Uh, friend groups tended towards uh, what they consider shame works as being uh, a way to enforce better behavior, introducing peer pressure uh, to motivate better security and privacy behavior. And then lastly, introducing rewards and punishment schemes were proposed for improving behavior usually in the context of coworkers, but not exclusively. And of course, as with the others, this came with a trade-off. Um, for this one, designers need to remember that social systems do come with social dynamics. In the case of rewards or punishments, relationships among group members may not be equal, and that can create issues. Group members may have an argument leading to access controls being used in a malicious way in a bid to get back at another member. Uh, and similarly, members may not want to enforce agreed upon rules for fear of reducing social, social standing or introducing a conflict. In the words of one participant critiquing an approach with strikes for bad behavior, how do you not lose friends? So in summary, uh, we collected 11 design proposals from 43 participants across four social groups. And by qualitative analysis, 
analyzing um, the proposals and their discussion, we identified four design dimensions for social resource sharing controls and uh, four trade-offs across them. Key takeaways from this work, uh, communal resource SMP controls do not have a one-size-fit-all design approach, and social systems can and will be subject to social pressures that need to be considered when you're making these kinds of systems. Uh, we hope this work will help to better understand the requirements for good SMP design and communal resources, and uh, I'm good to take any questions.